about chameleons. You know, those really cool lizards that everyone loves that change color and you know, they're they're just pretty cool. Let's, let's talk about these. A little while ago, I did a video called Watch This Before Getting a Chameleon. And in that video, I just talked about some things that I think that people should know, you know, before they get a chameleon. That video, <laughs> I'll come out and say, wasn't the best received, honestly. And while I do mostly stand by everything I said in that video, I think that it could definitely be worded a little bit better with some better explanations. So we're, we're going for it again today. So let's just go right into it. Chameleons are a type of lizard. Now there are so many different types of chameleons. There are tons of different species of them. The most common ones that we see in captivity though are veiled chameleons, panther chameleons, and jack Jackson's chameleons. I have been owning chameleons for a few years now. I have owned a few different species. I have also worked with chameleons at the zoo that I used to work at. I have done educational shows with chameleons and stuff before, so while I'm no chameleon expert or anything, I hope that I do still have some helpful information to pass on to these future chameleon owners who are watching this video. So let's just go right ahead and start uh, talking about some things that I think you should know before you get a chameleon. The first one that I want to talk about that people often don't always agree with is just the fact that chameleons don't really like handling. Chameleons are an animal that unfortunately just don't like people. And chameleons also stress very easily. So if you're looking to get an animal that you can handle and sort of interact with a bunch, a chameleon might not be the best option for you. Chameleons are happiest when they're left alone inside of their enclosure, assuming that their enclosure is set up properly. When we have pet chameleons, it's really important to understand them. Now obviously I do want to say that every single chameleon is different. Some of them will be friendlier than others, but as far as friendliness goes for a chameleon, the most that they're really ever going to do is tolerate you. They're not going to really enjoy your presence or enjoy coming out and interacting with you necessarily. If you're someone who's looking for a pet that you can hold and interact with, I probably wouldn't recommend getting a chameleon, but instead maybe looking into some other options. Chameleons make wonderful pets for those people who are looking for something a little bit challenging and maybe something that they can have a nice display for. Chameleons though aren't really for the people who are looking for something that they can take out and hold every day. So let's talk about that a little bit more because on my last video I did have a lot of people come and say that that's not true, that chameleons love handling their chameleon loves coming out of its enclosure. Unfortunately, if your chameleon loves coming out of its enclosure, 95% of the time it means that your chameleon is unhappy in its enclosure. It doesn't mean that your chameleon loves you or loves being outside. It means that your chameleon isn't happy with where it lives and it's trying to find somewhere better. So if you have a chameleon that's extremely eager to come out of its enclosure every time you open its door, it's important to understand that that doesn't mean your chameleon wants to come out and play, it means that he's not entirely happy in his enclosure and then maybe you need to make a few adjustments. The next thing I want to talk about is the fact that chameleons are insectivores. This means that they eat a diet of insects and yes, it should always be live insects. Freeze dried insects or canned insects for that matter do not hold the same nutritional value that live fresh insects do and feeding these to your chameleon can result in all sorts of issues because they're just not getting the proper nutrition that they need. So if you're not okay with feeding live insects, I would definitely recommend considering a another type of animal that doesn't have to eat live insects because a chameleon is not going to thrive unless you are okay with feeding it a diet of insects. On this topic too, I want to note that chameleons do not need plant matter. A lot of people believe that chameleons, uh, veiled chameleons especially, should be eating plants and that they should be eating salads. I see very often people saying that their veiled chameleon won't eat its salad. How can you get it to eat its salad? The answer is don't. Chameleons do not need fruits and vegetables in their immediate diet. Yes, these chameleons can technically eat these things and oftentimes will. Veiled chameleons sometimes even eat the plants in their enclosures. Doesn't mean we need to be feeding them a salad all the time. Instead, what you should be doing is feeding your chameleon the insect, but you should also be feeding the insects. So instead of feeding your chameleon fruit and vegetables directly, take those fruit and vegetables, feed them to the crickets or whatever insect you're using. I'm just going to say crickets, for example, feed them to the crickets and then feed those crickets to your chameleon. 
chameleon because now your chameleon is getting all the nutrients from the crickets but it is also getting nutrients that those crickets ate from the fruit and vegetables. So chameleons are incredibly sensitive animals. They are very sensitive to their surroundings, such as their temperature levels, their humidity, their diet, everything like that. Chameleons are very sensitive. So because of this, it's very important that you have their care correct from the very start. If you are making mistakes with your chameleon's care, chameleons unfortunately are not very forgiving and these mistakes can lead to major, major health problems. Because chameleons are such sensitive animals, it's incredibly important that you do research before getting one and know what species you're going to be getting to ensure that you can provide it with the proper care that it needs, whether that be humidity levels, temperature, diet, all of those things. Just keep in mind that chameleons are very sensitive animals, so it's very important that their care is right from the get-go. Chameleons can be very high maintenance. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I personally love the maintenance that my chameleons require. You know, it's a bit of a challenge and a bit of a step up from a lot of the other animals that I own, which to me is something that I really enjoy. Take my Parsons chameleons, for example. My Parsons chameleons go through approximately five to seven gallons of water every single day. And not only do they go through this much water, but it also has to be RO water because I'm using this water through my misting systems. So my Parsons chameleons have a mist king hooked up to them and this goes off for 45 minutes every single day. So their mist king goes off for 15 minutes in the morning right before their lights turn on and then it goes off for another half an hour before their lights turn off. In the wild these guys experience a lot of rainfall and they love 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 these types of showers so you know hand misting a Parsons chameleon isn't an option you know. You don't want to have to stand there for 30 minutes every single day with a mister. And now these are Parsons chameleons. You know, I don't suspect most people watching this video are interested in Parsons chameleons. I suspect most people would be looking for veils and panthers and jacksons and things like that. However, it is just important to note that chameleons, regardless of whatever species they are, are fairly high maintenance because they have very specific lighting requirements. They have very specific humidity, misting requirements, things like that. My Parsons chameleons also have a fogger that runs on them every single night. It goes on for four hours during the night. And then some of my chameleons have fans on their enclosure that go on through the night. I don't think I have any other animal in this entire room that requires as much equipment and maintenance as my chameleons do. So that's just something to keep in mind is that these are a fairly high maintenance reptile and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just you know, do you want a high maintenance animal or do you want a low maintenance animal? Things that you need to consider if you are thinking of getting a chameleon. ties in with the whole um, high maintenance thing and being sensitive, but now I want to talk about UVB lighting briefly. I do want to mention I have done an entire video talking about UVB lighting for chameleons, so if you're looking for a more in-depth breakdown of that, please consider checking out that video. I will link it somewhere in here. So you can watch that if you want to know more in-depth about UVB lighting for chameleons, but let's just do a brief little uh, cover of it. So chameleons do absolutely need UVB lighting. That is not an option for them. If you are going to be keeping a chameleon in captivity, you need to be providing it with UVB lighting. Now, not only do you need to be providing them with UVB lighting, but you need to ensure that you're providing them with the right type of lighting. So chameleons absolutely need a T5 high output linear UVB bulb. Compact bulbs are no good for them. Don't want to use mercury vapor bulbs for chameleons either. The only two bulbs that I would recommend using Using are the Arcadia T5 bulbs or the Zoomed T5 bulbs. Your UVB fixture should also be the length of the enclosure. So for example, one of my chameleon enclosures over there is four feet long and the light that sits on top of it is a four foot long light. So you want to make sure that you have lots and lots and lots of proper UVB coverage in your enclosures. If you don't have the correct UVB lighting from the start, this can lead to all sorts of problems. The most common one that we see in captivity though is metabolic 
bone disease and this is incredibly heartbreaking. Chameleons do not recover from metabolic bone disease well at all. It often just destroys their quality of life to the point where they don't have one anymore. So it is so, so, so important to make sure that you're providing them with the correct lighting as well as the correct supplements. Again, I do have an entire video going more in depth on that, so I would highly recommend watching that if you are considering a chameleon because it's definitely too much to all cover in this video today. If you're considering getting a chameleon, something else that you should know is just that there is going to be a lot of conflicting information out there. Chameleons are an animal that we have been keeping in captivity for a while now, and there has been so much trial and error. You know, people used to think this, and now we think this, and now we know this, people used to know this. You know, we are learning new information about these animals every single day. So make sure that when you're doing research on these animals, just make sure you're doing research that is up to date because a lot of the time when you google veiled chameleon care guide you're going to come across a care guide from 2008 that has extremely outdated information. The next thing that is really important for you to know if you are getting a chameleon or considering one is to know the sex of your chameleon. Are you getting a male or a female? Now the reason why this is so important to know is because female chameleons actually have a little bit of extra care that goes into them. This is because female chameleons lay eggs no matter what. It doesn't matter if your female chameleon has been bred or not, she's still going to lay eggs. Egg laying can be an incredibly hard process of on a female chameleon, especially if she's not getting the proper care. So before we talk a little bit about egg laying, I just wanna say when it comes to owning male and female chameleons, in my experience, I've actually found that females tend to be a little bit more personable, a little bit more friendly, where I find the males are a lot more reserved and shy and just really don't want anything to do with you. Not that the females like love you or anything, but I do find that female chameleons overall tend to be a little bit more social than males do. So for this reason, I do personally feel that female chameleons make the better pet. However, there is special care that goes into them. So as I mentioned, these female chameleons are going to be laying eggs. Now I guess this isn't always the case. For example, Jackson's chameleons give live birth, but if you have something like a veil or a panther, you need to be prepared for egg laying. When these female chameleons are producing eggs, it takes a lot of energy out of them and a lot of calcium. This is one of the reasons why the correct UVB lighting and the correct supplements is so important. If you have a female chameleon and she's not receiving the correct lighting or supplementation, she's going to have a lot harder time producing those eggs and it's going to be really, really hard on her body and can also result in things like metabolic bone disease. If you have a female chameleon, it is also very important that you have a lay bin in her enclosure. Female chameleons typically lay their eggs a couple inches down in the dirt. Typically they'll crawl down, dig a bit of a hole, lay their eggs in that hole, and then leave them. So it's really important that you have a lay bin. If you don't have a place for your chameleon to lay her eggs, it's very possible that she just might not lay them because she doesn't feel safe to do so, and then this can result in her becoming egg bound, which is obviously a very bad issue and not something that you should want to deal with. And the last thing that I want to say is just that chameleons are very rewarding animals. You know, in the first video that I did where I was talking about just things you should know before you get a chameleon, a lot of people just said that I was just like hating on chameleons and discouraging people from getting them. And that was not at all the intentions. You know, I was really just trying to relay this information that I think is important for chameleon owners to know. It does not mean chameleons are bad animals or anything like that. It just means they're not always the best pet for everyone. You know, if you're someone who's looking for an animal that you can take out every day and hang out with, a chameleon is not going to be the best pet for you. And me saying that isn't meant to be mean at all. You know, it's just pointing you hopefully in the right direction of what pet you do want. So as I was saying though, chameleons are incredibly rewarding animals. If you are someone who wants to own a chameleon and you're prepared to do what it takes to own a chameleon, I think that you're really going to enjoy owning a chameleon. Chameleons are some of my 
favorite animals to own. You know, despite them being high maintenance, despite them not really being an animal that I handle much, I love my chameleons. I love watching them move around. I love feeding them. I love caring for them. I love the little challenge that comes with their care. So, you know, I am not saying that chameleons are bad pets. I, in fact, think chameleons are great pets just only for the right people. Dogs are good pets for someone, cats are good pets for someone, chameleons are good pet for someone, fish are good pet for someone, so I am not at all saying chameleons are bad pets. You just need to make sure that you actually want one, you know? I think a lot of people get a chameleon with expectations of it being something that it's not. People get chameleons and expect it to be this cool lizard that's gonna hang out on their shoulder and change colors whenever, just to blend in with things when, unfortunately, that is just not the reason reality of what chameleons are. Chameleons are fairly solitary animals that enjoy spending time by themselves and just being happy and relaxed in their enclosure. So now that we've talked about chameleons for quite some time, I am just going to go ahead and end the video here. I do really hope that you enjoyed it and learned something and hopefully if you are someone who's considering a chameleon, hopefully this video helped point you in the right direction. With all that said, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it a ton if you gave it a big thumbs up and also subscribe subscribe to my channel it would mean a lot to me also be sure to hit the notification bell I have been having so many people tell me lately that they have not been seeing my videos so please if you want to see those videos please hit the notification bell uh, yeah I don't really know what else to say so with that said I am just going to go ahead and, and end the video here thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video